call to order and a, a roll call. All right, Fredson. I think I saw the council member Fredson has joined. I am here, can you hear me? Yes, I can, thank you very much. Sterner? Here. Enzo? Here. And Councilmember member Wolf? Here. Zarin? Present. And Lindstrom? Hello, hello, hello. Thank you. You bet. Uh, next up is the reading of the executive order statement, and I will read that quickly. The council chair has determined it's not practical or prudent to conduct in-person meetings in response to the pandemic. Accordingly, committee members will participate in this meeting via telephone or other electronic means, and the meeting will be conducted under Minnesota statutes section 13D.021. If you have any comments, we encourage members of the public to email us at public.info at metc.state.mn.us, and we will respond to your comments in a timely manner. Let's see if there's no other changes. We've got an uh, agenda before us today. So without, object, without objection, we will move forward on that. And that takes us to the approval of the minutes from June 22nd, 2021. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? Wolf moves approval. Thank you, a second? Vento seconds. Roll call, please. Hudson? Aye. Sterner? Council Member Sterner? Aye. Oh, thank you. I heard you there. Vento? Aye. 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 We got gotcha. you. Thank you. Wolf is an aye. aye. Or Vento was an aye. And Wolf? Wolf is an aye also. Zarin? Zarin's aye. And Lindstrom? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. And that takes us to our consent agenda where we have two items two comp plans and comprehensive sewer plans for Birchwood Village and the city of Champlin. Is there a motion to approve this consent agenda? Wolf moves approval. And is there a second? Vento seconds. Roll call. Edson? Aye. Sterner. I see I'm acknowledging Sterner gave us a thumbs up. Bento? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Zarin? Aye. And Lindstrom? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. And that takes us to our non-consent agenda where we have four really interesting items to consider this afternoon. First up is 2021-175 janitorial services for the Metro plant. Mr. Young or Mr. White or both? This is, uh, this is John Young. I'm the facilities and fleet manager. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, committee members, I'm here to talk about the janitorial service for the wastewater treatment plant, the Metro plant. The proposed action for uh, this one is that the Metropolitan Council authorize the regional administrator to execute uh, a contract amendment for clean tech services for janitorial services for the Metro plant. It increases the total by 108,676 through for a revised value of 607868. The background on this is the proposed amendment for additional funding and terms um, extension will provide the janitorial service ongoing for the plant. This is current service. The solicitation process occurred uh, to replace the existing contract but it resulted in a rejection of all bids on June 14th. Um, 
and is uh, being resolicited at this time. The amendment will extend the current contract rates through November 30th of this year, 2021, providing required janitorial service for the new contract. During the solicitation process, the Office of Equal Opportunity set the Metropolitan uh, Council under utilized business goal of 12%. O, um, OEO determined that the recommended um, proposer failed the good faith effort for this contract. The rationale for this is that it's over uh, $500,000. Prior to this, it was not. Any questions? Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Young? Wolf moves approval. Motion's been made. Is there a second? Fredson will second. Very good. Roll call. Fredson? Aye. Sterner? Aye. Thank you. Vento? Council member Vento? Aye. Thank you. Wolf? Aye. Thank you. Zarin? Aye. Thank you. And Lindstrom? Aye. Thank you. And I appreciate the fact that uh, we're going to give this another shot to meet our DBE goals. Uh, that takes us to the second item, which is the adoption of wastewater rates and charges. Mr. Smith, we've we've got a preview of this, but here we are to formally move forward. Yes. Good afternoon, uh, Chair Lindstrom and members of the committee. Uh, if we could bring up the presentation, please. Jason, if you could please bring up the presentation for the rates and charges. 2021-176. While we are waiting for that, I am opening up mine here and here comes the presentation. Thank you very awesome. much. Thank you. So thank you. I am Ned Smith. I am the Director of Pretreatment and Finance for Environmental Services. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so just to uh, start us off, the proposed action is that the Metropolitan Council adopt the wastewater rates and charges outlined on page one of the business item to be effective January 1, 2022. Next slide, please. And what we're going to walk through today is uh, a reminder of the rate setting schedule most important and media as part of this meeting is actually the uh, feedback uh, and update from the customer webinars where we shared out our uh, proposed budget with our customers. Um, we will then kind of recap what we showed you on May 11th um, and show you what's changed, which isn't much, um, but we will put all those back out there as a reminder. So all of the slides will look familiar. Um, and then we'll have a brief look at uh, what we heard from our customers. And then uh, we will again propose the uh, adoption. Next slide, please. Um, so just a reminder, uh, the way that this schedule works, we do start back in May, uh, early May and mid-May doing industrial workshops. We also even back uh, earlier than that met with uh, some of our brewery customers and our liquid waste haulers. Uh, and then on May 11th, we presented the proposed budget and the proposed rates to the Environment Committee. And then we did go out, uh, we had customer forums on the 25th and the 10th. 25th, uh, Chair Zelli did a great job kicking us off and getting everyone excited, and we'd love to see him there. And then July, uh, June 10th, we had uh, Chair Lindstrom join us, uh, generating similar excitement for wastewater. Um, and it's just great to see all of the council members uh, join, that could join us. Um, on July 13th, uh, which is today, we'll review th that and also go over any customer input we heard. Uh, and then we'll make an adopt a uh, recommendation for the rate adoption, which will then go to the council on the 28th. Now, just a reminder, what we're approving today is just the rates. We're not actually approving the budget. 
Uh, that gets folded into the broader council budget, which will be presented to the overall council with the rest of the council uh, on August 11th, which is then uh, presented as a preliminary operating budget for adoption on the 25th. Uh, and then the final uh, council budget goes out on the 13th and then it's released for public comment. Uh, October through December, we take comments. And then on December 8th is when you actually approve the overall council budget, which will also include our budget. But what we're here today to do is to talk about our rates and charges for MCES. Next slide, please. Um, so we did go out and, uh, and had our webinars. Again, another year with outstanding attendance. Uh, we had 105 attendees from over 50 communities. Um, last year's record attendance was 85 from 40 communities. So we continue to grow. And there is absolutely no question that uh, as we continue uh, to think about what our presentations look like in the future, online will be a, a, a component of that. Um, not sure if that's a separate dedicated online webinar or if we will open up our in-person webinars to online. Um, but it was a robust presentation. Um, we had several speakers come out and I'll do it in the order of the pictures here. Uh, Anna Bessel talked to us about our customer portal and the improvements that are being there. Charles Lely talked about uh, the history and the engagement of MCS. I went through the finance pieces. Uh, Kyle Colvin talked through um, how our uh, rates are determined by city and he walked through the calculation process there. Uh, Lisa Thompson presented uh, COVID and what some of the work we're doing, particularly on COVID research. Um, and looking at COVID in our uh, in our influent uh, to determine where the COVID, uh, COVID activities or, or, or spikes are happening in the community. Uh, Janine walked us through the capital program uh, and then Judy Sventek talked us through the water resources policy plan uh, as that gets rolled out. Next slide, please. So an executive summary on our rates and charges um, should look very familiar. Again, any changes are in red. Um, so the only thing that really changed from what we showed you on May 11th is our industrial strength charge bumped up a little bit. Um, and that's because we were still getting final numbers from uh, RA Finance, Regional Administration Finance, especially from IS. Um, ES budgets the earliest of all of the divisions. And so um, we, <laughs> we often find ourselves in a, in a position where we're calling up RA saying, what are the numbers? And, and they don't know yet because they're on a, a later schedule than we are. Um, so as we got those numbers and refined them, we were able to drop those in. And so that did cause a slight tweak. And just for reference, the way we get our industrial strength charge, uh, we start with the overall budget and then we back out things that don't uh, directly apply to industrial waste, especially uh, Interceptor um, and some of our other uh, planning, um, planning activities. Uh, so uh, a change in our RA allocation would bump up the, uh, uh, the that bump can be absorbed uh, through other use, uh, frankly, use of reserve, or we can tweak our um, contingency reserve fund, um, but we can't tweak what the number is and how it drives drops down to the regional uh, industrial strength charge. So that's why it was at 5% and now it's at 5.4%. And we have shared that with our industrial customers uh, through our communications uh, vehicles, um, and we have not heard anything one way or the other. So uh, we feel pretty comfortable with that. Next slide, please. So uh, this too has not changed from May 11th. We're still at 323 million. Um, and our breakdown is pretty much the same. MWC, municipal wastewater charges at 74%, uh, SAC transfer at 18. Uh, again, no major changes here. Next slide, please. Similarly, our uses by category have not changed. The total is still 333. Um, that increase in interdivisional services uh, did not cause that number to jump. Um, if the debt service number looks like it's been edited, it is. Uh, that's because on the old slide, I don't want to admit it, but it added up to 101%. Uh, so when we went back and looked at our rounding, uh, we figured out that debt service should be 47%. So hopefully that adds to 100 now. But there was no material changes in the actual uh, line items. Just again, a slight tweak from interdivisional services, but that wasn't enough uh, to cause it to jump a percent. Next slide, please. Similarly, wastewater outstanding debt has not changed. Um, our projections are still the same. Uh, you can see we are, uh, we peaked at, in 2018 at about 1.36 billion outstanding. Uh, we do see that coming down a bit as we uh, get out of our debt bubble, uh, which is our next slide, please. 
So you can see uh, this number has also not changed. Um, and you can see that our debt service bubble, this number represents the change in year to year. So if you were at 150 million in 2018 and then in 2019, it jumped to 158 million, then that's an $8 million increase. And again, the reason this was a concern is because we typically do three to 4% increases, which is really only worth about eight to 11 million uh, in our MWCs. So that entire increase can be, uh, was consumed by our debt service bubble. Um, we are, uh, I'm always hesitant to say done because it sounds so final, but I really think we are done. Um, our debt service, uh, with most of this, the debt service bubble was the result of uh, some, some uh, spreading out of our principal payments back uh, during the recession in 2008 through 2011. Um, so we are done with that and we should uh, actually see a little bit of relief in the coming years and then it'll bump up one to two million, uh, kind of comparable with inflation. So we should see normal numbers beyond two to, uh, 2028. Next slide, please. Uh, never pass up a chance to put this out there. It's really old data, but I still love sharing it. Uh, we should get new numbers uh, in, in a matter of weeks. Um, those usually come out mid-July to mid-August. So hopefully we'll get some new numbers that show uh, that we're still very competitive, but generally this does show we're about 40% uh, cheaper than the national average. Um, and so uh, we consider that a competitive advantage for the for the region. Um, and so we never never shy away from sharing that data, even if it's a little old. But again, hopefully by um, August or even by the final presentation of the budget, uh, we might have some more up-to-date numbers there uh, from a more recent survey. Uh, again, we haven't gotten those back from NACWA. NACWA is the National Association of Clean Water Agencies, and they do it every three years. So we're waiting on those, waiting on those results. Next slide, please. Uh, just want to reemphasize, SAC has not increased uh, since January 1 of 2014. So we are still at $2,485 per unit. Next slide, please. And I'll walk through how we got there. Um, and so you can see our, our units uh, development continues. Uh, even though 2020 was, was such a rough year uh, in so many ways, from a development standpoint, our still residential development was still very, very strong in 2022. And a little sneak preview for 20, uh, sorry, for 2020 was very strong. A little sneak preview for 2021. Uh, right now through May, we are up 19% to 2020. Um, and that uh, is due to a 19% increase in residential. Uh, we are seeing it primarily focused in single family and apartments, um, not so much multifamily or uh, res retail, residential re retail combinations, but still robust growth. And then the outstanding news is our commercial is uh, coming back. Uh, commercial is up 19% uh, versus 2020. So we're very excited to see some positive trends there. Um, I am hesitant to project that out for the rest of the year at 20%, but uh, certainly to have your first five months start out that strong is a great great indicator that our, our development continues to be robust, uh, as especially in the commercial sector. Next slide, please. Um, so that all of that has put us in a very strong position for our reserve fund. You can see the blue line is what our actual reserve is for SAC. Uh, the orange line reflects what our council policy minimum balance is. Um, so we're very healthy there and uh, that allows us then to keep SAC flat uh, for the years to come. Next slide, please. And then uh, our webinar feedback, um, again, record attendance. I walked through the, the topics when I walked through each speaker. Um, and then an engaged audience uh, had a lot of help of, helpful questions. A couple of highlights. Um, they were curious about uh, what COVID-19 was doing to our capital programs, our flows, and our rates. Um, and for the most part, uh, those were all very consistent. Uh, so the answer is not much. The biggest really variable is our, our expenses, but it is um, very minor, uh, mostly for around PPE um, and a, and, a, uh, and actually the, we weren't using our uh, vacation days uh, because of COVID. So other than that, uh, pretty minimal impacts. Um, there were some questions about our private I and I initiatives and how that's moving forward at the Capitol. Uh, our chlorides treatment and reuse, how we're thinking about that and how we're approaching that uh, uh, looking forward. Uh, regional billing methodology and cost saving efforts. So we were uh, making sure that people understood how we think about uh, billing and then what were our cost saving efforts. There were, there were many that were outlined in the presentation and we discussed those and a, and a few extras. 
Um, and then MPCA coordination on PFAS. So PFAS has uh, become a, uh, a contaminant of emerging concern. And um, the question was, are you working with MPCA on that? And the answer is a hearty yes. Um, we work with them on a regular basis uh, to make sure we have a coordinated approach to PFAS and how we deal with it in the region. Uh, there was a question about Hastings plant update. How is the development going there, moving it out of downtown? And then uh, what SAC trends we're seeing. And, and I actually uh, just, uh, sh just shared the same thing that I shared here. It continues to be rust, robust. Down at the bottom is a link uh, where you can see all of those materials uh, and, and review. And I believe it's also recorded if you want to watch it. Um, and again, I can't uh, thank enough all of the council members who came to those meetings. It's uh, great for them to see what what, what's happening out in the community. Uh, of course, I know they see it and hear it every day, but it's uh, wonderful that they uh, can help us and, and show um, show their commitment to, to wastewater uh, at, at the council. Next slide, please. So the proposed action is that the Metropolitan Council adopt the wastewater rates and charges outlined on page one of the business item to be effective on January 1st of 2022. And with that, I'll stand for any questions. Thanks, Ned, any questions? Councilmember Vento. Mr. Chair, um, I don't have any questions. I just want to commend Ned and the staff. The workshops are, are excellent. And although we, we get to hear the presentations, it's always great to hear the presentation in the context of, of our community staff and to hear the concerns that they have. From the first session that I went to several years ago, two years ago, I've just really been impressed by the the really efficient use of time and keeping the pace going. People feel like their their time is being well spent. So thank you very much for that. I also want to do a shout out to Ned. I had a call several weeks ago from a local plumber in one of my communities regarding a sack rate for a new business. Ned, you couldn't have handled it better. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Councilmember Vento and, and Chair Lindstrom. I, I also want to acknowledge the wonderful partnership I have with Janine Clancy. Uh, she and her staff are have really been the drivers to helping us reinvent how we do these seminars. So I'm grateful to, to Janine and her staff, especially Anna Bessel, uh, Kyle Colvin, and uh, Kate Nyquist, and Angela Mazur. I'm sure there's some others I'm leaving out, but really appreciate the work. And of course, uh, the yeoman's work that Matt Selmeyer, uh, the handsome man in the suit, uh, is appearing on the lower right-hand corner. Uh, <laughs> the work that he and his team did, actually short-staffed, to turn this uh, budget around during COVID and during work from home. Everything was on time and, and buttoned up. And so I appreciate all the work there too. Kudos all the way around. Uh, thanks to everybody. Um, yeah, Mr. Selmeyer. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. I did notice one typo in the PowerPoint that I just wanna clarify for everyone. So our sources and uses are $333 million for each uh, category for revenues and expenses. And it said uh, the slide had 323 million as our sources, but there is no gap in between what we plan to uh, expend and what we plan to collect uh, for for 2022. So I just wanted to clarify that for the record. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I know that I caught that, but I just wanted to double check that you caught that. Uh, <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> just kidding. Thank you for that clarification. Appreciate it. Uh, excellent. Is there a motion to move forward? Wolf moves approval. And a second. And a second. Very good. Uh, roll call, please. And just for clarification, did I hear Sterner seconded? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Fredson? Aye. Sterner? Aye. Bento? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Zarin? Aye. Lindstrom? Aye. Thank you. Great. Thank you. And that takes us to a project in Maple Grove. Uh, Maple Grove Interceptor 900416, Replacement Land Acquisition. Mr. Wadeen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So again, I'm here. My name is uh, Tim Wadeen. I'm the System Manager with Interceptor Engineering, and I'm here to present on uh, 
project that we're working on in Maple Grove, Interceptor 900416, and uh, the land acquisition that we'll need as a part of that project. Next slide, please. So the project is located in Maple Grove near the intersection of Bass Lake Road and Troy Lane. It's about in the uh, southwest corner of Maple Grove near uh, the city of Corcoran. Um, we've done some televising as a part of our uh, continuing program and determined that uh, the, the pipe in the area has been deformed. You can see on the picture on the right here uh, a screenshot of that uh, that pipe that we televised in the area. Um, we typically don't use oval shaped pipe uh, as we as we place our pipe in the in the area. Um, so we really need to come in and repair this deflection that we have um, in our system. As a part of that repair we are going to need to acquire some land uh, for in, in the form of temporary easements uh, in order to access the pipe to make these repairs. Next slide, please. The temporary easements are expected to be from approximately 10 properties in a residential area. Um, the work itself is going to take place along 72nd Avenue North in Maple Grove, um, just a little bit uh, close to the Maple Creek uh, neighborhood park in the area. Um, the pipe is fairly deep. And so we'll need to make sure that we've got space to um, access the structures, um, reach the pipe, and make what improvements we need to, uh, to, to shore up or to, to repair our deformed pipe in this location. Next slide, please. So a very quick presentation here for you this evening, but our proposed action is that the Metropolitan Council adopts resolution 2021-18 authorizing the acquisition of temporary easements for the Maple Grove Interceptor 900416 replacement project and for staff to initiate condemnation proceedings. With that, I'm available for any questions. Thank you. What what does fairly deep mean? Like 30 feet uh, deep? The, the pipe in the area is around uh, 30 to 40 feet deep. It's getting on the deep side. It is uh, not as deep as some locations that we have in the area, Mr. Chair, um, but it is definitely on the deep side. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Do we have a motion? Wolf moves approval. And a second. Principal second. All righty. Roll call. Hudson? Hi. Sterner? Hi. Vento? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Zarin? Aye. And Lindstrom? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Last but not least, we're talking about Empire uh, again and the big project in that neck of the woods Empire Wastewater Treatment Plant Solids Improvements, Phase Two. Ms. Hutter and Ms. Heflin. Welcome back. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and members of the Environment Committee. My name is Heidi Hutter. I'm a principal engineer in the Wastewater Planning and Capital Project Delivery Group. I do thank you for the opportunity to present this business item for the Empire Heidi? Wastewater. Yes. Heidi, um, you are very quiet, so can you either get closer to your microphone or unblock your microphone if it's blocked? Because you're very muted. Is that better at all? Mm -mm. Can you hear me? That's better. Thank you very much. A little better? Okay. Uh, let me know as we go if that changes. Um, again, I just wanted to thank you for the opportunity to present this business item for the Empire Wastewater Treatment Plant Solid Improvements Phase 2 for this afternoon. Next slide, please. The Empire plant was originally constructed in 1979 with a treatment capacity of 6 million gallons per day. The last expansion occurred in 2005 and it increased the liquids treatment capacity for the facility to 24 million gallons per day. At that time, expansion of solids treatment capacity was deferred. In April of 2013, 
the Empire Wastewater Treatment Plant Skeleton Improvements Facility Plan was approved by Council. This plan is being executed in two phases, and it provides for increased solids treatment capacity using existing infrastructure, and then includes other asset preservation and energy efficiency improvements. Next slide, please. Phase one is currently under construction, and it includes the following elements. Biosolids pad improvements will increase storage capacity by covering an existing four acre biosolid storage pad. Stormwater from that new cover is captured and it will be infiltrated at an existing infiltration basin. Partial biogas treatment will remove moisture that exists in the biogas prior to use as fuel in our boilers. Existing boilers are near the end of service life. A boiler system renewal will replace the existing boilers with larger, more efficient boilers to serve plant heating needs. Next slide, please. This contract that we're here to discuss today is phase two, and that includes the following elements. A digester conversion, which will increase solids processing capacity by replacing covers and mixing and heating systems in two of the existing digesters. An expansion to the existing digester building will house the new equipment, and this will utilize existing infrastructure to increase solids processing capacity by 33%. Biogas treatment will remove hydrogen sulfide and siloxanes that are present in the biogas, and that will be removed prior to use as fuel for a combined heat and power system. The combined heat and power system will generate electricity and heat for on-site use of the facility. The system will produce about one-third of the plant's heat and power demand using biogas generated from the digestion process. Next slide, please. Two bids were received on April 27, 2021. The bid from Total Mechanical was in the amount of $15,665,585.70. The bid from Rice Lake Construction Group was in the amount of $15,802,000. The Office of Equal Opportunity set a disadvantaged business goal of 9% and it was determined that the DBE requirements for this contract have been met. Total Mechanical was determined to have the lowest responsive responsible bid. Next slide, please. Therefore, it is staff's recommendation that the Metropolitan Council authorize its regional administrator to award and execute a construction contract for the Empire Wastewater Treatment Plant Solids Improvements Phase 2, MCES project number 807, 401, contract number 20P182 with total mechanical for an amount not to exceed $15,665,585.70. Next slide, please. I would be happy to take any questions you have at this time. Thank you very much. Any questions for Ms. Hutter? Wolf moves approval. And is there a second? Turner, Turner seconds. All right, roll call, please. Hudson? Aye. Turner? Aye. Bento? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Zarin? Aye. Lindstrom? Aye. Thank you. Great, thanks everybody. Moving, moving through quite efficiently. Uh, this afternoon. And in fact, that takes us to our inf one and only information item, and that is our great general manager. What do you have to say? I have to say that there's a sigh of relief when Ned <laughs> presented the, um, the wastewater rates, because a year ago at this time, we were quite concerned about how economics were going to turn out. And mm. knowing that we had this debt bubble we were trying to get through, we didn't really want to have any any increased intensity in trying to keep those rates um, within a reasonable amount for us. So we're really happy that we're in that spot. And again, moving forward, we're gonna be happy to get out of that debt bubble as well. Indeed, no question about it. That, that's, right. that's the extent of what I have tonight. It's been a pretty quiet summer compared to last year again, so. 
We're okay. encouraging people to take time off and get out and enjoy the weather and and uh, do what they can to get recovered from from a lot of heavy heavy lifting, I'll call it, in the last year. No question about it. Very good. Thank you. And we are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Have a great afternoon. <laughs>